اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ویورز آئی ایم نورین فاطمہ فرام گل سینئر وی لیٹس ڈسکس دا چیپٹر آف ہومیوسٹیسس آئی ایم ڈیلیونگ دا لیکچر ریلیٹڈ ٹو ہومیوسٹیسس دیٹ از چیپٹر 2 کلاس 10th بایولوجی اینڈ لیسن نمبر 5 the topic homeostasis in human the first of all we will discuss about the contents that is definition main organ for homeostasis lungs skin and kidney in the previous lecture i have told you about the definition of homeostasis homeostasis is the maintenance of constant environment in a body homeostasis is essential for survival of human beings and for all the living organisms and these homeostasis required by the cells and the cells make up body system and body system maintain the homeostasis as indicated in this slide now i have told you about the definition let's recall the previous lecture homeostasis may be defined as the maintenance of the internal condition of body at equilibrium despite changes in the external environment homeostasis in human human have well developed system for homeostasis so the major organ which work for homeostasis are the lungs skin and kidney lungs remove excess carbon dioxide and keep it in balance what the skin did that is the maintenance of body temperature and also remove the excess water and salts the what the kidney did kidney filters the excess water salts urea uric acid from the blood and they are also involved in the formation of urine the skin which make up the integumentary system so in short we can say the integumentary system that is actually a sort of integument integument is the covering of the body the skin is the largest organ in the body which constitutes 12 to 15% of the body weight so someone can ask the question which one is the largest organ in the body that is the skin so i'm going to discuss the structure there are two distinct layer occur in the skin one is the dermis and other one is the epidermis as you are well aware epidermis is the outermost layer which is a sort of protective covering of the body and next to epidermis is the dermis dermis is a connective tissue layer under the epidermis it contains sensory nerve ending capillaries and elastic fibers switch and oil glands hairs and fat cells the skin this picture shows there are three layers previously i have told you about the two layers but actually it is composed of three layers outer one is the epidermis which is actually without the blood vessels this one is the epidermis second one is the dermis which is composed of blood vessel as shown in the diagram and also the sweat glands which have a pore in the outermost covering that is the in the epidermis second is the sebaceous or oil glands this one is the sebaceous gland hair follicles which are actually attached with the muscles and also the third one is the hypodermis hypodermis constitutes the adipose tissues and also the cutaneous vascular plexus next what are the important role of skin number one protection secondly regulation of body temperature insulation of the body by thin layer of fat cells in the dermis sensory receptions and biochemical synthesis and absorption it also serve as a barrier to the entry of microbes and viruses and you can easily see there is a oily layer over the skin which is a protective barrier against these germs and water loss occur in the skin by two routes number one evaporation and other one is the sweating this picture shows the sweating excessive heat are released outside the environment through the skin in the form of vapors or we can say as a result of evaporation so 
the heat, excessive body heat, they are escaped out through the evaporation. The next slide, the skin also help in providing the cooling effect when sweat is produced by sweat glands. And also as a result of metabolic waste, such as the excess water, salts, urea, uric acid, all of them, they are removed in sweat. So it is concluded, skin help in homeostasis by radiating heat and panting. What is panting? That is actually the heavy breath as taking place in this diagram. Now, what is panting? You are well aware that dogs paint to regulate their temperature. Unlike humans, dogs are not able to regulate their temperature using sweat. So instead, they paint to circulate cool air through their bodies and to evaporate water from the mouth and upper respiratory tract. Now, next is the goosebumps. What are goosebumps? Contraction of small muscles which are attached to the hair, they will form the goosebumps. It creates an insulating blanket of warm air. So goosebumps are actually the hairs on your skin which are rise up or stand up. So the air which are trapped in between these hairs, these, these airs, they are warm up by the body heat. That's why the air becomes an insulating layer. Now the second organ is the lung. What the lung did? Lung maintained the concentration of carbon dioxide in the blood. Cells, all the carbon dioxide are produced. The carbon dioxide are produced as a result of cellular respiration. You are well aware about the cellular respiration. Previously, in the previous chapter, I told you about the cellular respiration in which CH bond present within the glucose, they are broken down. And the energy which is located in between the CH bond, they are released. So huge amount of energy is released by breaking the CH bond as a result of cellular respiration. And also the carbon dioxide is produced. So these carbon dioxide, which are produced as a result of cellular respiration, they are deposited, they are diffuses into the tissue fluid and then form from there into the blood. So blood carries carbon dioxide to the lungs and lungs from where? From the lungs and they will come out of the body. Or we can say the carbon dioxide to lungs from where it is removed in the air. So carbon dioxide are removed into the air. And the blood carries carbon dioxide to the lungs. This is the lung. So this picture shows the respiratory system in which moves oxygen into the body. Respiratory systems are involved. The oxygen into the body while removing carbon dioxide from the body. Next. The next organ is the kidney. This picture shows the kidney. Uh, in this, we will discuss the urinary system of women. The urinary system of women composed of a pair of kidney. In this diagram, you can easily show a pair of kidney, a pair of ureter, this one and this one, a pair of ureter, and then the urinary bladder. This ureter open into the urinary bladder and then to the urethra. So these are the four major component, one, two, three, and the four. Four major component which are involved in the urinary system of women. And we also call the excretory system of women. Now, what is, what is the role? Number one, kidney filters blood to produce the urine. So we can say kidney involved in the urine formation in which the ureter carry urine from the kidney to urinary bladder. These are the pair of ureter which are arise from this portion of the kidney. And then the urine, they carries the urine into the muscular bag. That is the reservoir to collect the urine. And then this is the channel or the tube from where the 
urine excreted outside. The kidney filter blood to produce urine. Kidney remove waste product of metabolism. They are also remove the excess water and salts from the body. And also one of the important functions, they maintain the pH of the blood by removing the excess water and salts. Because these salts and water, they can rise the pH if they retain within the body and you are suffering from different diseases like edema, etc. Et Ureter carry urine from the kidney to the urinary bladder and urinary bladder is the muscular reservoir as, have, as have, I have already told you, to store urine. And urethra is the channel or tube to exterior that carries urine from urinary bladder to the outside of the body. Now I'm talking about the structure of kidney. Kidney are dark red bean-shaped organ. These are the dark red bean-shaped organ. Each kidney is 10 centimeter long, 5 centimeter wide, and 4 centimeter thick. And its weight is about 120 gram. Now, what is the location? They are actually placed against the back wall in the abdominal cavity, just below the diaphragm. And they are also protected by last two ribs, that is the 11th and 12th ribs. And this left kidney is slightly a little higher than the right kidney, as I mentioned in this diagram. Now, the structure of kidney, the structure of kidney, that is the convex side, and this one is the concave side. So, concave side of the kidney faces the vertebral column, as shown in the previous diagram. So, this step depression. This depression is called the hilus, which is actually near the center of concave area. That is the center of concave area. This area of kidney through which this one, this ureter are arise because there is a pair of kidney. So pair of ureter are arise from both kidney. Ureter leaves the kidney and other structures, including blood vessels, lymphatic blood vessels, Lymphatic vessels and nerve enter in, enter and leave the kidney. Next. Now I'm talking about the anatomy. Anatomy is the internal structure of the kidney. So you have to discuss the longitudinal section of the kidney. That is the longitudinal section. In this section, we show two regions, outermost region and then the inner one region. As shown in this diagram, the outer region, which is dark red in color, that is called the renal cortex. And inner to this is the pale red in color, as shown in this diagram. This pale red in color, which is called renal medulla. So, renal medulla, that is consists of several cone-shaped area. This cone-shaped area, as seen here, you can easily see by pointer. This cone-shaped area is called renal pyramids. So these renal pyramids, they will project into a funnel-shaped cavity. That is called this funnel-shaped cavity, which are called renal pelvis. These renal pelvis, it is, it is actually the base of this ureter. That is the renal pelvis in which all these pyramids are open into this funnel shape area. That is the funnel shape area. Okay. And these are called renal pelvis. You can see all of these structure when you will observe the longitudinal section of the kidney. Now, next is the calysis. Calysis is actually the first part of renal pelvis. They are all, these are small cup shaped spaces. What they did, they collect the fluid before it moves into the bladder. They collect the fluids, move into the bladder through the ureter as seen here. So here is the calysis. And these are the following pathway adopted to flow the urine. Glomerulus, then renal tubule, then renal pelvis, then renal calyces, and then the ureters. 
So ureter, which collect the urine from the renal pelvis, and then this pair of ureter, they will release the urine into the muscular bag, which is called bladder. Now that is all the all about the anatomy. Now I'm going to discuss the nephron. Nephron is a unit of excretory system. Million of nephron, they will form a kidney. So within this nephron, we will discuss the structure. That is the structure of nephron, which is composed of this part that is called the renal, uh, renal capsules corp and renal tubules. This one is the renal capsules and renal tubule. So two major part of nephron, one is renal capsules and renal tubule. Renal capsules composed of a cup shaped structure, which is called Bowman capsule, and this tuft of capillaries that is called glomerulus. Collectively, glomerulus and tuft cup shaped capsule that is called Bowman capsule is called renal capsules. Now, these are the renal tubules. Renal tubule composed of proximal convoluted tubules, then the loop of Henle, and then the distal convoluted tubules. All of these structures are totally surrounded by means of capillaries. And these distal convoluted tubules, they are open into the collecting duct. As mentioned here, this is the collecting duct, this is the Bowman capsule, this is the descending loop of Henle, this one is the ascending loop of Henle. And that is the longitudinal section of kidney. And this picture shows the renal pyramids. Okay. Next, in this slide also told you about the renal capsules and renal tubules. Now, renal capsules has two parts. As I have told you in the previous slide, renal capsules has two parts. Number one is the glomerulus, and this one is the Bowman capsule. That is the cup-shaped structure. What is glomerulus? It's a network of capillaries. Network of capillaries. The dia of this artery is larger as compared to this capillary. Right, and this one is the renal tubule. The second part is the renal tubule. That is a part of nephron. We start after the Bowman capsule. So first portion, as I have told you, is the proximal part of the proximal convoluted tubules, and this one is the loop of Henle, and that is the distal convoluted tubules, as I have already told you in the previous slide. Now, the distal convoluted tubules of many nephrons open into a single collecting duct. And many collecting ducts, these are the many collecting ducts, they are joined together to form a sev several hundred papillary ducts. So that is the papillary duct, which drain into the renal pelvis. They are drained into the renal pelvis. And these capillaries of the glomerulus arise from efferent arterioles and join to form efferent arterioles. Now, that is all about the structure of kidney in which you also discuss the structure of nephron because it is the part of a kidney because it is a unit of excretory system. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, the functioning of kidney. How does the kidney function? That is very, very important. Because first of all, the important function of the kidney is the urine formation. And second one is their osmoregulatory role, which will be discussed in the next lecture. The, how does the urine formation take place? Three steps are involved. Number one, pressure filtration. Number two, selective reabsorption. And number three is the tubular secretion. First one is the pressure filtration. So you must be talking about the renal capsules. Where does the pressure filtration take place? 
these are the renal capsules composed of cup shaped capsule which is called baumann capsule and the glomerulus as a result of pressure filtration the water salts glucose and urea they are filtered out through the wall of capillaries into this baumann capsule and they will reach at this area it is called baumann filtrate it is called baumann filtrate which are formed as a result of pressure filtration so the, that's why it is called pressure filtration that is the first step second step involved here is the selective reabsorption the selective reabsorption involves the proximal and distal convoluted tubules and the loop of henle where the selective reabsorption take place in which in the selective reabsorption water and salts are reabsorbed into the blood stream again because all of these structure is totally covered by means of capillaries and veins right and then is the tubular secretion where in this the third step in the tubular secretion the relative ions creatinine they are excreted out which is a formed as a result of metabolic waste product next pressure filtration as i have discussed in the previous diagram so when blood enters the kidney by the renal artery it goes to many arterioles and then to the glomerulus the pressure of the blood is very high as i have told you because the diameter of these vessels or the blood vessels they are decreases into the glomerulus due to the capillaries because capillaries are smaller than arteries and so most of the water as a result of this pressure water salts glucose and urea of the blood is forced out of glomerular capillaries this material now passes into the baumann capsules and now it is called glomerular filtrate as i have told you in this diagram next is the selective reabsorption in the selective reabsorption 99% of the glomerular filtrate is reabsorbed into the blood capillaries 99% is reabsorbed which are actually filtered out as a result of pressure so those component which are essential into the body they are again reabsorbed through the through the process number 1 osmosis number 2 diffusion and number 3 is the active transport and which part of the kidney involved to do the selective reabsorption that is the loop of henle and the proximal distal uh, proximal uh, tubules and the distal convoluted tubules so the process involved to do this active transport osmosis as well as diffusion there are two loop of hen uh, two loop of henle to side one is the descending limbs of loop of henle in the descending loop of henle they will allow the reabsorption of water while the ascending loop of descending loop of henle involves the reabsorption water ascending loop of henle involves the reabsorption of salt mainly the sodium so these play a very important role because sodiums are required for the sodium potassium pump they are also required to maintain the blood pressure and put, uh, all, all of these the distal convoluted tubules again allows the reabsorption of water into the blood so previously from the picture i have told you all of these things next one is the tubular secretion tubular secretion different ions creatinine urea which are actually formed as a result of metabolic waste product as a result of nitrogen metabolism and these has to be expelled out from the body the kidney play a very important role in the third step that is the tubular secretion so it has to be removed out and that is very essential to maintain the blood at a normal ph the normal ph of the blood is 7.35 to 7.45 Uh, blood cells and proteins are not filtered through the glomerular capillaries why the blood cells remain outside 
because their size are bigger, because they are relatively larger in size. So finally, what the what happened? From 99% of absorption, only 1% of originally filtered volume, they will form the urine. All the essential components, all the essential metabolites, all the essential ions, all the essential salts, they are reabsorbed from the uh, loop of Henle, ascending and descending loop of Henle. Mainly the sodium and water are involved. And only the excess water, they are removed from the body in the form of urine. So average adult, they will produce urine about 1.4 liters per day. So what is the chemical composition of urine? Water 95%, urea 9.3 gram per liter, chloride ion 1.87, Sodium ion 1.17, potassium ion 0 0.750, and other ions and compounds. These are in the variable amounts. Now that is the flow chart in, in which we will discuss the kidney function. Kidney function is the proximal uh, tubules. These proximal tubules, they will actually involve in filtrate, filtration. Filtrate contain 60 to 90 percent filtrate sodium ions, hydrogen ion, potassium ion, glucose, bicarbonate, phosphate, and sulfate. While those essential uh, compounds or materials or ions which are uh, required by the body, they are reabsorbed. That is Nine, no, sodium ion, 65%, chloride ion, water ion, bicarbonate, glucose, organic substrate. And which one is eliminated, which is not required by the body? They are going to be eliminated. These are drug, water, hydrogen ion. And which are retained in the blood due to their larger size, these are the protein and blood cells. And those which are as a result of different metabolic waste products, which are called the metabolic waste product. These are ammonia, which are very toxic in nature. They must be expelled out in the form of urea or in the form of urine, they are secreted. So kidney function, that is actually the, in the form of this flow chart, or we can say the kidney function and the regulation. This kidney play an important role in blood pressure, in regulation of blood pH. They are involved in cardiac activity. They are also removed as a result of metabolic end product, that is urea and creatinine, which this process is done in the form through the third step, that is tubular secretion. And then the kidney also involved in the balancing of calcium within the body and vitamin D activation. Both of these are required. So they are uh, both involved in the, uh, to uh, give the strength of the bone or involved in the bone structure. From here, the blood formation and then the water balance. Kidney play an important role, the water balance. So thank you. That, uh, it's all about this chapter, all about of this topic. And one topic is left from in this chapter. We will be discuss in the next lesson. That is the short question related to the previous lecture. Okay, thank you. I hope to understand all of these things. And uh, I hope you will, mm, you will learn it. Okay, thank you. Good luck. Love is... Mm,